Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, today, we're going to take a virtual farm trip to learn about grapes. So we're going to give some of our friends just a few more minutes to join us. Um, I see over 300 and nearly 350 of you on Zoom. So thank you so much for joining us. Um, while a few more of our friends um, participate, I want to go over a few housekeeping things just real quick so we can get right to the action. Um, first and foremost, if you are a fourth grade teacher, this information is for you. We have a unique opportunity for you to be a part of a healthy snack program. What that is, is a fourth grade only supplemental hands-on experience for those of you who wish to participate. Um, for example, at this virtual trip, we have a select group of fourth graders who are going to have a healthy snack component in their classroom tomorrow where they will get to taste snack and learn a little bit more about grapes and a hands-on experiential opportunity. Um, so if you are able to participate and want to have that opportunity, feel free to um, reach out to Kobe. She is on this form here and we will get you on the list for future opportunities. Um, okay, so housekeeping things. First of all, can you guys all hear me? I got a comment saying we can't, so let us know. Um, otherwise, I wanna go over a few things. First of all, this is a Zoom webinar. So if you're unfamiliar with that, what that means is you are not going to see the list of all of the other classes. What you will see is only the information that we're putting out to you as we're recording this. Um, there will be a recording. It will be um, available on YouTube, on our website, and it'll be sent directly to your email box when this is finished. We want you to ask as many questions as you'd like. Please do that um, via the Q&A box on Zoom. And for those on YouTube Live, just sit back and enjoy the uh, virtual trip. Um, all of this will be available for you in real time in the live recording. Um, this is meant for questions only. So keep in mind that that chat and that Q&A box is just for questions for our farmers. Some of you have this worksheet. So I'm gonna be going over this worksheet as we go um, out. It was emailed to you and it's on our website. These are fillable PDFs for your students to follow along. Maybe if they're not with you in class or if you are looking for a sub plan one day, if you're not able to be in class, um, it's a great opportunity for you to utilize that. So without further ado, we are going to talk about an important specialty crop here in San Joaquin County, and that is grapes. And so in order to help us learn a little bit more about grapes, we are actually going to be joined today by two grape farmers. We have Farmer Joe and Farmer Amy out here with us. Good morning, guys. How are you today? Hi. Uh, good morning. How are you doing? Awesome. We are doing great. We have uh, several thousand students. Um, last count, we had nearly 20,000 students that are joining us today, which is amazing. And thank you all for joining us because that is a record breaking number. So we're so excited. Um, so we're going to have Farmer Joe and Farmer Amy just introduce themselves real quickly. And then I think Amy is going to take us through the beginning of the process. And Joe is going to take us through kind of the end of that process. Hi, my name is Farmer Amy, and I'm here in Lodi, Lodi California. California. Um, I am a grape grower. Um, my husband and our three boys and I, we grow grapes here um, east of Lodi, and we're here to share that with you today. Hi, good morning, everyone. My name is awesome. Farmer Joe, and again, we're here in Lodi, like Amy just mentioned. I actually am a manager for John Couch Farms. Uh, we farm around 7,000 acres of uh, grapes, so we have a lot of grapes, and today we're going to try to show you what we do in the field, and hopefully it all works out. All right. So, awesome. like well, I Farmer said, Amy, go ahead and get us started. All right. So, I'm going to teach you a little bit about how we grow grapes. Um, I'm here today in a vineyard. A vineyard is um, where grapes are grown, and grapes grow on a vine. So, as you see the vine here, um, we measure our vineyards in acres. Um, an acre of grapes or an acre is around the size of a football field. So, one acre of grapes um, will have about five to 700 vines in that acre. Um, and that vine can, can, can produce around eight to 10 tons of grapes. So we'll talk to you a little bit about how that happens. Um, and with that, I'll start from the beginning. Um, so grape vines are planted into the ground. Um, they are a permanent crop, which means they grow year after year. So this is what um, a young grape vine that's ready to plant looks like. And it'll take this vine about two years before it is ready to produce fruit. 
Um, so these grapes here are on a trellis system. That um, system helps support the vine as it grows um, and puts it into a format that can easily be harvested. Um, we have the trunk of the vine. Farmer Amy, and, not yes. to not to interrupt you, but can you define trellis for our students? Some of them, um, myself included, may not know exactly what a trellis is. Yeah, so a trellis is something that supports our vineyard. So if you see um, these vineyards, the vineyards you may drive by, they're in neat rows, they're evenly spaced. And so we um, put a metal stake in this case. Um, that metal stake helps support that tiny vine as it's first growing and supports that vine throughout its life. Um, up here, it's a little harder to see, but there are wires that come off of another piece of metal. Um, and those wires support um, the branches or the cordons of the vine. And that helps keep that vine in that shape. And it also helps us for harvest, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Um, these vines, the, the life of a vine, um, it starts producing grapes at about two years old, but we have vines here in Lodi that are over a hundred years old. Um, so with the proper care, nutrition and management, these vines can produce for many years. A typical vineyard usually only lasts about 20 to 25 years though. And a lot of that has to do with just um, changing varieties or planting something um, that's a little more productive, but we definitely do um, care for our old vines and um, keep those producing as well. So as you Farmer see, Amy, the vine we've, had a, yes. we've had, sorry to interrupt you again, we've had a question come in and I think it kind of talks about um, a little bit what you're talking about with the trellis system. The question is from um, Miss Williams and Korn's class. It says, we sent in our question, but just in case, can you explain the difference between vines that grow in bushes and ones that grow across the wires? Yes, of course. So like this vineyard here today, it is grown on a trellis system that's supported by TIPA or by posts and by wires. You may see some um, vineyards as you drive around um, that do not have wires. You'll simply see um, maybe a wooden or metal post and a, as the question said, a bush shaped um, vine. Those um, in this area are typically your older vines and those were um, without their trellis systems, but they also, um, they also, you know, they grow grapes just the same. Um, but one of the main differences is that those grapes cannot be harvested by a grape machine or by a harvester. Those have to be harvested by hand. And so we'll show you those tools in a little bit, but a lot of times our historical vineyards, those were planted well before um, these types of trellis systems were developed. And things are constantly changing in farming. We're learning new trellis systems, trellis systems that allow more light to get in, um, to space the vines in different formats. Um, we're always learning and always changing. Um, at this time, Thank I'll tell you, you a little, a little bit about um, in a given year, what a vineyard, um, what we go through, what we do and how that vine grows. Um, so like I mentioned, um, grapes, they, the grapevine stays in the ground. We don't replant them each year. Um, so the grapevine grows all year long. Um, in the springtime, um, the leaves will start to come out. Uh, we call it bud break. Um, and those leaves and shoots will begin to grow. And typically here, it starts in about March. Um, so with bud break, the vines start a period of rapid growth. Um, you know, something, these leaves that start out as tiny little buds will grow to this size in just one, um, just one growing season in just about six months. Um, so we have to monitor the nutrients, the amount of water um, and care for those vines as they continue to grow. Um, so, the vines will grow all spring and summer long. Um, this right now, September is harvest season. Um, one of the most important parts of the year um, where we get to see the fruits of our labor. Um, harvest in San Joaquin County typically begins the beginning of August and will go all the way through October. So we have a couple month period there where grapes are being harvested. Different varieties are harvested at different times. Um, and we determine if our grapes are ripe based on um, their sugar content. So the sugar content in the grape um, is when we know that they're ready. Um, and I can show you really quickly how we test that. So what we'll do is we'll go through the vineyard and take a few samples um, from throughout the vineyard. We'll crush those grapes um, in a bag or a bucket or something. and um, we will test that sugar. So the juice inside the grape has 
has sugar content. And you will be able to see when you test that juice, you look through this and um, obviously can't see it here today, but it will tell you what level, uh, what level of ripeness, what level of sugar content the fruit is at. And then we will know that it is ready to harvest. Um, that's, after harvest. That's awesome. After Go ahead. harvest, we'll continue to care for the vines. Um, depending on what time they were harvested, um, those vines will continue to be irrigated, um, may receive some nutrients, um, just to keep those vines healthy as they go into the winter season. Um, the winter is an important time for our vines. Um, when you drive by a vineyard in the winter, you may realize that um, they have no leaves or the leaves are brown. Um, they may look dead to someone um, who doesn't know, but those vines are actually in a very important part of their life cycle and that's called dormancy. So like the trees in your backyard that may lose their leaves in the fall, um, our grapevines, typically around the time of the first frost, um, they will lose their leaves. Um, so all you will see out here is the canes and the trunks and those vines, they take a dormant period. They, they go to rest until that March time period when I talked about when we, uh, when we go into bud break. Um, the vines are still alive, they're still taking up nutrients and storing those for the crop um, to come for the next season. There's one other thing that happens during dormancy and it's a very important part of, um, of growing grapes and that is called pruning. So once all of these leaves drop um, in late November, early December, um, we will start pruning our vineyards. Um, pruning is primarily done by hand um, with pruning shears like you see here. Um, some farmers do use um, mechanical pruners that are mounted on tractors um, and we're constantly developing ways to save labor and um, save time. Um, but the majority of vineyards in this area are pruned by hand. So someone will come through and they will prune the vines and you will be left with um, just a couple of inch um, piece, it's like a haircut. So the vines, they get their annual haircut, usually December through February, so that they're ready for the upcoming season. Um, so that is so what happens Amy, in the life cycle of a vine during the year. Yes, Chris. That's awesome. We have a couple of questions about um, part of that life cycle. Um, Mr. Brown's class wants to know, how do you water the grapevines? You've mentioned that we need to keep them healthy. So they wanna know, how you water them. And then another question come in saying, you have so many grapes, how do you make sure all of your grapes stay healthy? Yeah, so um, those are both great questions. Um, as far as irrigation, um, irrigation is um, the word that we use for watering our crops, whether it's a grapevine or another crop. Um, but the irrigation is something that we manage closely. So um, it's dependent on, you know, every year we get different amounts of rainfall. Every season's just a little bit different but we're able to irrigate um, with precision. We use um, drip irrigation. So we have it turned on for you here today so that you can see um, what a drip irrigation system does. So this drip hose, Farmer this Amy, black, yes. Mrs. Thompson's class wants to know, you're talking about drip. What happens if you overwater a grape? So yeah, so we use, um, we use drip irrigation and it is able to um, put the right amount of water where it needs to go. Um, and so rather than overwatering, we are putting that water right in the root system. So it is dripping down um, these vines, especially as they mature and um, have been in the ground for years, they have very deep root systems and we are dripping that water directly where it needs to go. We're able to monitor that. We can or monitor the soil moisture. And more than anything, just looking at the vineyard. You can tell, um, just like if you have flowers or a garden at home, you can tell if, you're, if your plants need additional water, if they look like they're stressed, or if they may be getting too much. And so we, um, we use precision irrigation to manage our water and to make sure that we're not using more, um, more than we need to and that we're applying it when we need to. Um, this season, for example, or this last month, we have had um, some very extreme weather for the month of September. Um, beginning of the month, we had record temperatures. And so we know that our vines need more water to get through those periods of stress. We also know that a couple of weeks ago, we had some early season rain. So areas that we received more rain, 
um, would not be irrigating at that time. So we can manage. Um, so how... it's kind of like humans, right? Where exactly. if it's hotter humans, we need more water or electrolytes and just like our plants also need the same, right? Exactly. And we also know, you know, if it's been a wet winter, our soils retain more moisture. And especially earlier in the season, we may not have to supplement as much with irrigation. Um, one of the classes had asked about how we take care of so many grapes. Um, a lot of it is um, we use technology. Um, many, um, many farms will use overhead satellites and different um, technology there to see if there's areas um, within their vineyard that are um, more stressed than others. Um, and a lot of it is just being out in the field. So as farmers, um, we can see when we're driving by our vineyards or when we're out doing one of these tasks that I mentioned earlier, we can see if that vineyard needs some extra care. Um, and some of the ways that we keep them healthy are um, through nutrients. Um, so just like humans need vitamins and um, nutrients to stay healthy, um, we supply those to the vineyards. Um, we are able to, um, some growers will take samples and test, you know, is this vine lacking a certain nutrient? Does it need more potassium? Does it need um, something to help it um, to continue to grow well and continue to ripen the amount of crop that we want in that growing season? Okay, so I have just to recap for some of our students who are going doing our worksheet, um, farmers grow grapes um, via acres and one acre is roughly give or take the size of one football field. So if you can imagine going correct. and watching a football game, imagine that being an acre of grapes. Um, the growing season begins in March and then harvest begins in August and ends in late October. So we have several months worth of um, harvest period. We have several of our students and several questions about varieties and red versus green grapes. And do those um, vines look any different or do those vines look the same and it's just the fruit that's different? So maybe if you could talk about that for just a minute. Yeah, definitely, Krista. So you talked um, real quick on the acres. Um, so just here in San Joaquin County, um, we have about 100,000 acres of grapes grown in this region. So 100,000 football fields of grapes are grown just here in our county. And I think that's just an incredible number. And of that acreage, we have a wide variety of varieties. Um, there are almost 100 different varieties grown, um, grown in this area. Um, and a variety, it's just a different type. Um, so you may see... Um, like these grapes here, um, they are purple or an almost you know, dark black color. You have some that are um, more of a reddish or a light purple color. Um, we have, we call them white grapes, but the light green that you may see. And we'll show you some of those different varieties later. But um, as far as the vines themselves of different varieties, they look very similar. Um, to the untrained eye, it's probably pretty hard to tell apart. Um, farmers who do this every day, we may notice difference like the shape of their leaves or some vines grow more upright where others kind of droop as their natural growing habit. But to, um, to the general person, most grapevines will look um, very similar. So you talked to, you're talking about the grapevines and you can kind of tell the difference. Um, Mrs. Fisher's class wants to know how tall do those grapevines get? What a fun question. Yeah, so left unpruned and untrained grapevines, um, grapevines will grow very, very tall. We use the trellis system that we talked about earlier. These um, trellises are set at, I believe, 60 inches, so about five feet tall. And that trellis system helps to maintain the vine in the size and shape that we want it. But um, if you have a wild grapevine, um, you may go you know, along a river or something like that where you see a wild grapevine it will grow and grow and grow. And it's amazing how big one vine can get if it is not um, if it is not managed. And that's part of something that we do in a vineyard on a farm is to manage that vine so that it is the size and shape that we want it. And so that it produces the amount of fruit um, that, we are, that we are trying to produce in a given year. And Got it. So we're acre, pruning it to try to help it grow yeah, better. So and pruning that helps okay. to keep it into a shape that... Um, that is manageable and that produces what we are looking for. Got it. Okay, so when we're growing them, or growing our grapes, often in the valley we, we see a lot of bees and we talk about pollination is really important. Um, 
Are grapes something that need a pollinator or do they get, get by without it? Um, so grapes do not need bees to pollinate. Um, so unlike an almond or um, other crops that you may see that use bees um, uh, to help them pollinate or need bees um, to help them pollinate, grapes do not. Um, grapes are, um, they're fertile on their own. They do not need pollinators. Um, they do not need the pollinators help to, uh, to help them grow. Okay, and we have a several very concerned classes and students regarding the safety of your grapes from bugs, pests, and animals. Can you maybe chat with us about what we do and what farmers do to help protect their crops from those bugs? And, and maybe there are some that are good for them. I don't really know. Maybe you could chat about it. Yeah, definitely. So a big part of keeping our vineyards healthy is um, to look at the pests, um, pests and diseases that may um, impact our vineyard that may um, cause harm to either the grapevines themselves or to the quality of the fruit. Um, so we work um, as farmers, we're out in our vineyards um, looking at these things. And we also work with pest control advisors that help um, to walk our vineyards and see what's going on at any given time um, and if there's any pest problems. Um, so yes, there are definitely, there are pests that um, are negative, pests that cause problem in a vineyard, but there's also a lot of beneficial insects. And so beneficial insects are something that um, they eat typically, they're predators to those pests that may cause problems. Um, so they may eat some life cycle of that problem pest. So we wanna make sure that we manage our vineyard in a way um, to keep the beneficial insects around um, and some farmers even introduce beneficial insects um, that um, in turn help get rid of those problem pests. Okay, so we've grown our grapes and they can be different varieties, different sizes and the color and the shape and whether or not they have seeds, all of that is entirely based on the variety and the plant. We do have one last question. Several of our students want to know, where do you get your seeds or your plants that you're putting into the ground and what time of year do you plant? new plants? Yeah, so um, like I held up earlier, um, there's a couple of different ways we or plant grapes. They can be planted as a potted plant um, or during that dormant season, but either one of those comes from specialized nurseries, and those specialized nurseries, um, they focus on growing vines or trees um, specifically for agriculture, so for farmers to purchase. And they will, um, they grow those vines and then we will, um, when we're making that decision of what we are going to plant, if we're going to be planting a new vineyard, um, we will order that variety um, that we are looking for and those nurseries will provide that. And so um, it just depends on if you're planting a dormant plant or a live pot or a potted plant, um, different growers plant at different times of year. Um, but those are grown in um, specialized nurseries and they use a lot of science to um, develop those varieties and to develop them for, um, for the different growing conditions and for what the consumer is looking for. Awesome. And then one final question, because I've gotten so many students who want to know how many grapes do you think are in the vineyard that you're on now? Again, students, um, as a reminder, we're in Lodi. Yeah, so this vineyard here in Lodi, it will um, produce probably around 10 tons of grapes per acre. So just that one football size eight will produce about 10 tons of these grapes. And in just a minute, Farmer Joe is going to explain to you how we harvest those grapes and how that process works. Um, 10 tons um, is a lot of grapes from one small vineyard. And so that is really what we're for or what we work for and we work for that harvest season. Okay, students, so if you can pretend for a minute that you are a grape grower, you have your grapes that you've planted, they start their bloom season in March, you've gone all the way through the summer, you've used your refractometer, you've tested your samples, you've done all the watering, made sure that everything is growing properly, and now it's time to harvest because your refractometer says your sugar content is just right. Now, maybe Farmer Joe, you can kind of talk to us about what happens once we reach harvest season. What does that look like? How do we harvest? Is there different methods? Is everything, you know, harvested the same? Um, I think a lot of our students are very curious about that aspect of the uh, grape production. So Farmer Joe, take it away. Okay, thank you. Yeah, as Amy mentioned earlier, is that we have a lot of 
here is an example right in front of me. If you have a white grape, you have a red grape, so they refer to black, color, and you also have another green grape here. One of the questions was asked earlier about how do you start a vineyard? How do you grow a vineyard? Uh, and one of the questions was with seeds. Well, with one of the unique things with grapes is a lot of the grapes now do not have a seed in it. So if you have like a crimson seedless, a flame seedless, Thompson seedless, there are no seeds in it. So you can't plant a plant without a seed. So that's one of the things is how we propagate it at the nursery is kind of unique. Again, with like right here, this is called a Melissa. This is a Thompson seedless. You get a difference in size and even shape. So there's thousands and thousands of grape varieties. Uh, also, if you actually squeeze them, this will be a clear juice where another variety will actually have a red juice to it. So there's different methods in how we grow our grapes, the varieties that we grow and what determines it. Grapes could be used for a lot of different commodities. We can make juice out of it. We can make um, raisins out of it. And we could also use them for table grapes. So I'm gonna kind of show you the methods and how we do our harvesting and how we go through the process of during the harvest. First of all, one of the methods that we use, we refer to as hand pick. So it's either hand picked or machine picked. And with hand pick, it's actually done using a grape knife. As you can see here, it has a handle and a blade that's kind of curved. And what you would do is out in the field, you're using this, you'll be holding the cluster, and that's what we refer to this, and you're using a grape knife. Um, and you'd be putting that into a bin or a tray like this. So you'd put, place it under the grapevine, like here. And a lot of times you would set it onto the ground like that. And as you're picking, you gotta be careful. You're just dropping a fruit right into the tray. Typically what this is done for juice because it's gonna be all mixed up and squashed on and everything else. So it's kind of used for juice when we do this kind of a method. Now, the other one is kind of unique here in the Lodi area, as we call it for pack boxes. And there's some old labels and they're pretty neat. Uh, like here it says Lodi gold on it. These could be packed for uh, juice and sent over the United States. They could also be packed in boxes like this where you go to the grocery store and you're purchasing grapes to eat. Again, it's very, very, very important when you do go to the grocery store to purchase grapes. The first thing you wanna do when you take them home it's always wash them because you never know who's touched them before you. So it's really, there's two methods, like I mentioned. Uh, one is by hand and it's physically cutting it off. The other one is with the grape harvester. And we're going to kind of walk around and I'm going to show you this big monster machine. Um, so far, Joe, if I'm not mistaken, the harvesting that you're talking about now, what time of day does that happen at? The hand harvesting so, obviously would happen during the day. So people are safe. <laughs> when does the machine or mechanical harvesting occur? So with hand picking, that's typically done during the daytime because there's people out there and they have sharp knives and that. So you wanted to have enough daylight to be able to see what you're doing. As Farmer Amy mentioned earlier, that we measure the sugar content in a grape. And so all our mechanical harvesting is actually done at nighttime. It's hot state and the equipment doesn't work. So we'll start at maybe eight o'clock at night and work to early morning. And it's a long shift, long hours. Uh, so right in back of me is a grape harvester. And they're actually made here in Lodi at Ames. Uh, we have 14 of them. And pretty much all our 7,000 acres that I mentioned earlier are harvested with the grape harvester. It's a piece of equipment, it just goes over the top. And as Farmer Amy mentioned earlier, it's a trellis. So we, when we plant our vineyard, we put it on a trellis so we can adapt it to the harvester. Uh, one harvester like this is equal to about 40 people. So it doesn't take away because it takes people to build the harvester, um, you know, and other side mechanics and that. So we're not really taking 40 jobs away. We're converting to what they're doing. Again, like they may be welding on here. They may be working on the engine on here. Um, typically with the harvester, we have one operator, one person on top driving. Uh, we have two tractors. And behind a tractor here is called a gondola. And what it is, follows along the harvester. 
And as the harvester is shaking it, it shakes the vines, the fruit falls off, it goes on the conveyor belts and into this gondola. And then from there, we dump it into trailers and then it's hauled off, processed into juice. Again, it's all done. Hey, at Farmer nighttime. Joe, we, uh, we have a, a, we have a fun it. question for yes. you. One of our uh, teachers, Miss Lint's class, wants to know is it fun to drive the harvester? Well, it's probably fun the first few minutes, but when you do it all night long, it's probably not as fun. It's so like how driving long? a new car so you for talk the first about... time. It's really exciting. Okay, so how oh, we, long we can does work it take to harvest? Like a... So for us, we usually start the middle of August, and we will harvest uh, to um, the end of October. So our harvest at times, it depends on the year, will last anywhere from 10 to uh, 12 weeks. And we work on a schedule in a, and they tell us how many loads they need for night and then we try to accommodate that. So it, some nights we're maybe doing eight loads, some nights so maybe farmers we'll doing work. 50 loads. Okay, so we have several of our students who are in classes who are asking how long does it take? So the harvest season takes, you know, give or take two months. And they'll run an all night shift. And as Farmer Joe just mentioned, that's done because one, it's more pleasant for the uh, farm workers. Think about it a few weeks ago, it was 115. I don't think any of us want to be out harvesting in that weather. Um, and it's also less sticky for the grapes. So it's easier on the machines and the equipment um, in order to do it that way. So if that kind of helps some of, them, some of us. And then as a reminder, if we're working on our worksheet, we're at this box right here. And it says name two types of harvesting methods. So one would be handpicked and the other would be uh, machine harvested. And we know that when we decide to harvest is de determined by the sugar content and the variety of our grape that we're harvesting. So I think that that answers a bunch of the questions that are coming in trying to help some of our students do that. Oh, we have a student who wants to know um, how long do those machines last? Does the machine last all season? And then how many miles do y'all put on those machines? So good questions there. First of all, uh, as I mentioned, we have 14 machines. Our oldest machine was manufactured in 1990. And the last one we purchased was in 2017. So we have a variety of age. The older machine does exactly the same as what the newer machines do. Uh, they're pretty much hasn't changed too much over the years. Uh, every winter we go through and we do a lot of maintenance on them and get them prepared. But the age of it uh, doesn't really be affected. Okay. And this is someone Ross asked, class. like, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Okay. They so, yeah, the other one is that, go ahead. No, uh, well, you may be headed in the same direction, Joe. Mrs. Rawls class um, from Fremont, their fifth grade class, wants to know what happens if the harvester breaks in the middle of the night. Uh, it's like any piece of equipment, <laughs> uh, whether it's your car or whatever. Uh, we have mechanics out in the field, and during the night, uh, they're repaired and you just, whether it's a flat tire or a hose breaks or whatever, you just get it fixed and you keep moving. Uh, one of the questions earlier was uh, how many hours do we use? We're actually, when we're harvesting, we're going a mile per hour. And how we kind of get the scenario is we're here in Lodi and uh, the speed that we're going, if you kind of use this scenario, we started harvesting grapes here in Lodi we're gonna drive all the way down to Los Angeles, harvesting grapes and turn around and come back harvesting grapes. So we put on about 700, 750 miles uh, per year on one harvester and it's very, very slow moving. Okay, so it's slow moving. We have some questions here. Oh, this is a good question. They wonder what's the biggest grape you've ever grown? Uh, actually, that's an interesting question. And it kind of reflects back to school. And what I mean by that, uh, there's a school in Lodi called Tokay High School. And the, actually that high school was named after a grape. Uh, that grape was used for juice. It was actually used for uh, an eating grape. And it was a really big grape. Uh, they called it flame seedless, I mean, flame Tokay, because uh, oh, okay. in the evenings our weather cools down. And uh, it was a very, very large grape. Not too many of them awesome. around anymore. So we've harvested our grapes. 
whether that's hand harvest, if that's the method that we need to, if it's like a bush type, I think believe farmer Amy said that we have to hand harvest those. The trellis in the grapes that are behind me and in the vineyard that you guys are in, those help support the weight and the um, mechanization of the shaking the grapes off. Those are sorted out, leaves are sorted out. We have our gondolas and they have grapes in them. Where do they go and what do we put them in? Well, we, we put them in a truck. Once they're picked, harvested in the field, we put them in a gondola first off of the harvester, and then they go into a truck. Each gondola that we're harvesting weighs around six tons. So on a truck, there's going to be four tanks, and each of them hauling uh, six tons, which would be about uh, 24 tons total. And from there, they're hauled into a processing facility. Again, with the grape harvester, those grapes are only being used for juice, not as much for, not for, uh, eating like you would get in a grocery store. We're so making you're them saying into that juice. Different grapes or different varieties are used for different things. Maybe you could tell us, um, we have someone who has obviously had one, a cotton candy grape. So maybe you could tell us kind of what some of the byproducts are of grapes and how are grapes utilized in different capacities? Yeah, as far as a cotton candy variety, that is used, we refer to as a table grape. And that is something that you go into a grocery store and purchase. Uh, again, as we talked about earlier, those uh, the varieties of grapes, actually, actually a newer variety that was developed recently. Uh, we have someone who's very concerned for your sleep. Mrs. Woods class wants to know during harvest, how much sleep do you get? Uh, I kind of kind of explain it as we try to bank our sleep. And what I mean by that, any chance we could get to sleep, that's what you do. It may be during the day or maybe for three or four hours long and maybe for an hour, but uh, whenever you could get rest, uh, you try to get rest and you try to sleep. Gotcha. Okay. And over, two... over the years, you kind of learn and adapt to it. Got Yeah, that makes sense, right? I mean, you sleep when you can. I think most of exactly. our parents and teachers can, can uh, relate to that. So we have a couple of questions. How long does it take to harvest an entire vineyard? Well, it depends on how many acres. And again, with this machine that we're looking at right now, we do about one acre, so one football field per hour. And how much comes off could depend on a variety. And it gets back to like, if you're growing a crop of five ton, 10 ton or 15 tons, uh, the harvester is pretty much going at the same volume, the grape that are coming off the conveyor. Which that, I mean, that makes sense. Um, so maybe let's talk about some of the great byproducts that we use. We know we can do grape juice. So some of our students are filling out our worksheet and they're, they're asked to do three. So maybe you could help them out with three great byproducts. So one of the byproducts, of course, as we mentioned, is juice. And uh, the other one is raisin. And raisin, all a raisin is, is a dehydrated grape. And as I mentioned earlier, is that uh, there's grapes that are seedless. So like a Thompson seedless is used for raisin. You don't want to eat a raisin that has a seed in it. So those are a seedless grape. And then as mentioned earlier, a, a table variety. The table variety is what you would buy at the grocery store. And those are, you just pick the berry off the cluster and you would eat them. And again, you always want to wash them. So really they're used for juice. They're used for raisins and uh, for table market. Um, the other one- We can make jelly, it, uh, right? We can make grape jelly. Yeah. I mean, I like oh, a good yeah. PB&J. And still, you could put raisin brand, you know, raisins in cereal. There's a lot of cookies. Uh, and then some of the other byproducts that we talked about that may be not consumed by humans. But as we make um, uh, juice, there's a byproduct called a pumice. And actually, the pumice is a seed that's left over after it's crushed. And, and what happens to pumice is it could be used for dust control. We could put it on a roadway for dust control. But the other way that byproduct could be used is for cattle feed. And uh, dairymen or cattlemen could supplement uh, their feed, their commodities with grape pumice. So there's the grapes really don't go to waste. Okay, so we've harvested our grapes, we've grown them, we've harvested them, and now we're ready to eat them. It's my understanding that grapes are a very nutritious specialty crop. Is that correct, Farmer Joe? And Farmer Amy, you're welcome to jump back in here. We're going to do uh, and we have about have, five minutes left. I'll have Farmer Amy do that one. Okay, I'll Farmer, have Amy, Farmer Amy do that one. Do you want to tell us about some of the health benefits of grapes? It's my understanding that they're a really healthy specialty crop and make a great snack. Is that correct? 
That is true. Um, grapes are one of the healthiest snacks you can eat. Um, they are a uh, low calorie, high nutrient um, type of snack. Um, they have a lot of antioxidants, which can help your body in many ways, whether it's your heart, your digestive system. Um, so grapes are something that they're, they're great to eat. They have nutrients um, and they taste good. So um, we definitely encourage you to eat grapes and to try different varieties. And my understanding is you can, I did not realize this until like a week ago, but you can actually freeze grapes. Is that right? And then eat them later? Yes. Um, my boys, that's actually one of their favorite snacks. So you just take, um, you take your bunch of grapes, you wash it, um, pull them off um, and you can lay them on a cookie sheet and pop them in the freezer and then store them in bags. Um, but they're a great snack. Um, it's very refreshing and it's a lot healthier for you than many of the other sweet snacks that we may crave. Um, but yes, frozen grapes are great if you haven't tried them. It's also a great way to, um, to save them um, when they're not ripe. Because as we talked about, grapes in California, here in Lodi, we're harvesting about August through October. Um, some parts of the state, um, that growing season's a little longer and you'll see fresh California table grapes um, in your stores or farmer markets a little earlier than August. But um, grapes are a seasonal product. So um, if you're looking for California grapes, grapes that are grown here, you will only see them part of the year. Um, we are a, you know, a worldwide economy, so you will see grapes that come from other parts of the world, um, you know, with a difference in seasonality, so you will see them other times of the year, but if you're looking to support um, California grape growers, you're really looking at, um, at the earliest May or June into, or through, through the fall, is when you'll find um, California grown grapes in your stores or farmers markets. Okay, I think we're going to conclude with this uh, final question that I'm going to combine from two different folks. So we have several folks who have referenced the drought that California is in. And so we want they want to know how is the drought affecting great production? And Mrs. Myers class wants to know how does the rain during harvest affect the grapes? Maybe you can kind of chat about uh, us being a bit weather dependent. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Farmers are definitely at the mercy of, of Mother Nature, and every single year is a little bit different, um, whether it's drought conditions, whether it's too much um, rain in the winter, um, and we have to work to manage that. Um, talking about weather and weather um, issues, um, this spring, um, if you may remember, um, in April, we had a frost. And like I mentioned, in March is when these vines start to grow for the year. So we actually had a lot of um, a lot of grape vines that were affected by frost this year. So at the beginning of the growing season, um, it dropped below 32 degrees, um, as low as the mid 20s in certain parts of our growing region, and that affected the shoots. Um, so what it'll cause to happen is it'll cause those young shoots to die off. Um, grape vines are very resilient. They will push um, additional shoots, but some of those may not be as fruitful. So you may see the green canes and leaves, but they probably did not have as much crop as they would have in a normal year. Um, we're also very dependent on the rain. Um, and so we manage our irrigation due to how much rain we have and what kind of situation we're in. Um, the drought has definitely impacted um, grape growers like, um, like all farmers. Um, luckily, grapes do not use use as much water as some commodities do and um, and they're very resilient. So drought conditions may affect our, you know, our general crop on a given year. Um, but um, the, the vines will typically, they, they'll survive it, but they will not thrive like they would in a more normal uh, rain season. That makes total sense. Well, I want to thank Farmer Joe and Farmer Amy for being here. Um, I have two additional facts for you guys. Um, we grow a lot of crops here in San Joaquin County, and grapes are our number three commodity for 2021. So that's a pretty awesome fact. And then I'm, if I'm not mistaken, I believe that California produces about 99% of our table grapes as well. So that's awesome. That is going to conclude our trip for today. I want to thank you guys for being here. Again, if you are a fourth grade teacher and would like to join us at our Healthy Snack Program, go ahead and reach 
reach out to Kobe at Farm Bureau and we'll get you set up. And again, what that would be is watching a virtual trip just like this one on a different commodity. And then we'll go to your classroom and put together a healthy snack presentation for you. Um, if you're interested in any of our additional content, we have another virtual farm trip coming up actually a month from today on October 27th. We're going to cover apples. Registration for that will be open October 1st. And um, so an email will be going out to you if you are a third grade teacher um, in a third grade classroom here in California. We have our in-person events um, listed for you guys on the screen that you will be a part of. All of our virtual trips, our commodity presentations are available on our website, which is sjcagventure.com. Um, feel free to take a look at those, utilize those in your classrooms. Um, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. We want to thank our um, participants today, Farmer Joe, Farmer Amy, the San Joaquin County Agricultural Commissioner's Office, San Joaquin County, Golf Photography, Zillion Media for helping us out with some of our um, digital content and the Specialty Crop Block Grant for being a sponsor of us as well. We hope that you enjoyed your adventure in agriculture. You missed the mark for the Gary shout out. That was a man that... <laughs>